Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The St. Lucia Fire Service welcomes the donation of a new ambulance. St. Lucia and Cuba deepen relations. The NCPC forges public-private sector dialogue through productivity. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. The St. Lucia Fire Service has welcomed the donation of a new ambulance from the Japan Aid Program. Here's Janelle Norville with the details. The Japan International Cooperation System recently made a donation of equipment and an ambulance to the St. Lucia Fire Service. According to Deputy Chief Economist in the Ministry of Economic Development, Kerry Joseph, Upon submission of the St. Lucia Fire Service's 2017 budget, the Ministry saw that the government was unable to foot the bill. As a result, the Ministry sought the assistance of the Japan International Cooperation System under the Japan Aid Social and Development Project. In their budget, they submitted that they required some ambulances, about five ambulances. They required two rescue tenders and a stylist. And we recognize that the government's budget would not have been able to support all their requests. And so we were very thankful that under the Japan Aid Social and Economic Development Project that we have been able to procure some of the equipment that they require. And so we are happy to be here today to be part of the process of the handing over ceremony for the ambulance and the 12 AD machines. Japan International Cooperation Systems Project Manager for St. Lucia, Ichimura Suka, said the rest of the equipment, which includes a ladder truck and rescue vehicle, is on the way. This project is aimed to provide grant funds for the purchase of materials and equipment manufactured by Japanese companies with a view to contributing to the disaster management in St. Lucia. Under the project, one unit of ambulance here and 12 units of LEDs have been procured and one unit each of turntable ladder, skylift and rescue tender are expected to be delivered before this year ends. Thanks to great support by the government of St. Lucia and strong contribution made by the government of Japan, this procurement is on the right track to the successful completion. Acting Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs, Justice and National Security, Ricky Quinlan, expressed gratitude to the Japan International Cooperation System for the donation. He also highlighted its usefulness in serving the people of St. Lucia. The ambulances of St. Lucia Fire Service have a very good record of duration for years and years because they are very well maintained. So it is for us, the public, to help each other appreciate that asset. It is by no means their ambulances, but they belong to all of us and they serve all of us. Chief Fire Officer of the St. Lucia Fire Service, Joseph Joseph, highlighted that the donation is accompanied by a training component. He indicated that the receipt of the equipment and appliances will greatly assist the fire officers in carrying out their duties. The donation of this modernized equipment add to our resources and is of immense benefit to our department as well as the government and people of St. Lucia. Let me assure you that every piece of equipment received is vital and makes the job of the fire service personnel easier. I therefore urge our officers to ensure that there's a corresponding improvement in the service rendered to the public as a result of the improved conditions and equipment. The rest of the equipment is expected in St. Lucia before the end of 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The Government of Cuba and the Government of St. Lucia have had fruitful bilateral relations over the past 40 years, focusing on areas like education, healthcare and agriculture. Earlier this week, Cuba's Foreign Minister, His Excellency Bruno Rodriguez Perilla, paid an official visit to St. Lucia where he met with Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney and the Minister responsible for External Affairs, Honorable Sarah Fad Bobra. Discussions were held surrounding the possibility of deepening relations in areas such as sports and pharmaceuticals. We are exploring different ways and means, uh, taking into account comparative advantages, uh, even in the field of pharmaceutical and biotechnological industry, 
which is um, uh, important in, in Cuba and it's possible to, to find common interests and flexible uh, uh, formats in order to, uh, to, to share uh, technologies and state of art uh, uh, vaccines, uh, therapeutic vaccines against cancer or, or state of art treatments, uh, the diabetic uh, food and diabetes and, and, and others. Cuba's foreign minister also expressed interest in working with St. Lucia and other Caribbean islands to enhance the tourism product. Even on um, uh, multi-destination programs, some uh, 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 marketing uh, common actions, uh, we feel that as part of a, a, a complementary um, a, a way for integrating furtherly our uh, uh, touristic, uh, economic uh, uh, sectors and, and markets, and we are very, very open to to, to establish uh, complementarity on this uh, way and to, to 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 have a common destination uh, uh, programs. Minister Perea will also visit Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, and Barbados. The Department of Health and Wellness, in collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization, remains committed to improving the management of chronic conditions in St. Lucia as it recently held a training of leaders for the Chronic Disease Self Management Program. More from Fennel Neptune. Healthcare professionals and community leaders were recently granted the opportunity to acquire the skills and tools to effectively provide self management to persons living with chronic conditions. The chronic conditions include diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, kidney disease, and arthritis, to name a few. Master trainer for the Chronic Disease Self-Management Program, Yolanda Alcindor, expressed hope that the leaders of the program will acquire the knowledge to work with patients, to assess self-management behaviors, and to improve the health outcomes. We are hoping that all our leaders trained in this program, we'll go out to the community and facilitate community programs and um, persons living with chronic condition will have an opportunity to participate in this program. Hopefully, we're hoping that all persons li living with chronic conditions will get an opportunity to be part of the program where they will be empowered with skills to help them better self-manage their condition. Alcindo also emphasized on the tools the leaders will gain from the training in the efforts to implement chronic care management. In this program, we're looking at skills such as better breathing, having a good night's sleep, how to use medication, communication, dealing with difficult emotions, healthy eating, the importance of physical activity, and all these will help persons better manage their chronic conditions. Participant of the leaders training, Sandy Felix Paul says, she's very pleased that the training provided them with the knowledge to assist persons with better managing their chronic conditions. The workshop covered a variety of other subjects, not only diabetes or chronic illnesses, it gave you the opportunity to elevate yourself as an individual so that when you go into the community to assist clients, you have knowledge in helping them and getting them to an area where they would be comfortable. People who are living with diabetes sometimes have no knowledge as to the way they can go ahead and plan their meals, but we have received information as to how to go ahead and help them manage their the weight as well as going ahead in getting themselves at a place where the disease is managed. The Chronic Disease Self-Management Program is developed and researched at Stanford University. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. On Monday, 17 June, the spotlight will fall on public servants as Public Service Week begins. A major highlight is Departmental Staff Appreciation and Recognition Day. Amanda Faye Clark reports on how the Ministry of Agriculture is gearing up. The Ministry of Agriculture's representative on the Public Service Week Committee, Shadley John, says the officers of the ministry continue to explore educational opportunities available the world over in honing their skill set and understanding of the agricultural industry. 
This, she says, is a definite indication of how serious and committed our young professionals are in making an impact on the agriculture economy. We have a workforce that is valued and hence our focus for Public Service Day is to let our officers know that their efforts and their contribution to the development process. Agriculture industry of the 21st century does require a workforce skilled and knowledgeable in creating movement and innovation in the agriculture economy. Ms. John further explains that services and products we offer in the future depends highly on every profession under the sun. There is room within the sector for finance practitioners, journalists, surveyors, information analysts and ITC specialists just to name a few. Our young people now are advancing themselves in various areas. We have food specialists, food safety specialists. We have persons who are advancing in communications. We have our young entrepreneurs using our local produce to do various things. And this is what we want to highlight during our public service week, how we contribute as public servants. Agriculture leaders, quite apart from working to improve the island's positioning in regional and international markets and our overall agriculture product, will continue to mobilize the youth in considering careers or specializations which will assist in its mission to ensure sustainable agriculture livelihoods in St. Lucia. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Fee Clark reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Hurricanes can be very destructive. Although we can't stop them, we can lessen the effects of hurricanes on our lives and property by preparing. Start by having a family disaster management plan in place long before the hurricane season starts. Discuss your plan with your family and ensure that everyone knows their role. Okay everyone, let's go over our family disaster plan from last year. You should also have an emergency supplies kit with items that do not need refrigeration and will last for some time. Include canned foods, water, clothing, first aid supplies, flashlights, battery-powered radios, batteries, sanitation and hygiene supplies, medication, special need items for infants, the elderly and persons with disabilities. Remember to regularly replace items like water, food, medication and batteries. Ensure that your home and vehicle insurance coverage are appropriate and up-to-date and secure important documents in a watertight container. Ensure that your house and property is in good condition and can weather the storm. Trim branches away from your house and prune all dead or weak trees on your property. The Atlantic hurricane season is from June to November, but preparedness is year-round. Always be prepared. This message brought to you by the Beaufort South District Disaster Preparedness Committee and NEMO and funded by the USAID Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome once again to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports recently partnered in a film workshop for unattached youth in St. Lucia. The skills obtained at the workshop will allow them to be equipped to produce videos and gain employment as freelance reporters. The workshops consist of four-hour training sessions per day and conducted in various communities. Among the topics covered are basic camera operations and shooting techniques, audio, television and radio, post-production, lighting for film and television, producing and directing, on-air presentations, television and radio, producing and directing, storytelling and scripting. Leones Comprehensive emerged champions of the school's under-15 40 overs cricket competition after a low-scoring final against St. Mary's College at the Gozile playing field on Wednesday. Rain delayed the start and reduced the game to a 35-over encounter. Leon Hess went into bat after winning the toss and were dismissed for 133 in 32 overs with Khan Elcock top scoring at 32 and Sanjay Francis adding a crucial 30. Aaron Joseph picked up three wickets for 16 runs. 
bowling for St. Mary's College. In reply, St. Mary's folded for 80 all out in 21 overs, with Darren Sammy Jr. top scoring with a knock of 15. Lee John picked up 4 for 22, and Can Elcock 2 for 17. Elcock was named Man of the Match. And that's your update this week from Youth Development and Sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Strengthening public-private dialogue while increasing awareness of productivity and competitiveness is a core mandate of the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, the NCPC. The NCPC recently brought its productivity message to the sales, marketing and middle management team employed with the Windward and Leeward Brewery at its corporate office in Vidbute Cash Trees. Planning and focused efforts. This was the primary reason why the Windward and Leeward Brewery, WLBL, and Dubelais Bottling Company, DBC, invited the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC, to deliver a presentation to its sales and marketing and middle management team. Corporate Affairs Manager with WLBL DBC, Fiola Ferdinand, said the presentation was well received and timely, with many of the managers now eager to share the new knowledge with their staff. We work in a fast-paced manufacturing and beverage sector, so a lot of our employees do have looming deadlines and it's, it's a fine balance between um, what is important and to prioritize. So it was a great refresher on, on how to be more productive um, throughout the day, throughout the weeks so when you have um, impending tasks. The presentation focused on productivity trends in St. Lucia from 2007 to 2018, benchmarking St. Lucia's productivity level with that of other regional or similar jurisdictions. Focus was also placed on barriers to productivity in the workplace and how productivity per employee can be calculated. Penny John, commercial assistant with WLBL DBC, articulated her takeaways from the presentation. We as employees are considered assets to our companies. The presentation today was very effective and informative, and it also reinforced what I already know as an employee at WLBL after 13 years of working within my company. The presentation was delivered by the director of the NCPC, Fiona Hingson, who noted that the NCPC is always willing to interface and dialogue with the public and private sector on strategies to improve national competitiveness and productivity. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquayor. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame, Department qui ne responsabilité pour formation and the government of the GIS, and the television national player NTN, which is a new Creole, which is Primus Hutchinson. The Department of the Pompiers of the GIS has found a good assistance for the Japan. The institution of the corporation of the Japan has made it possible for the Department to receive a commerce equipment and ambulance to serve the Department of the Pompiers in the village of Denry. The one ceremony, Jerry, the second chef of the Pompey, George Victor, parlé de l'appréciation du département pour le cadeau et la qualité pour le test de la qualité pour le village d'Henry. Mais il a aussi annoncé que le Japon n'a encore plus de cadeaux pour le département de Pompey. C'est ici. Nous avons aussi espéré que tout de suite nous avons aussi reçu un truck pour aider les gens qui ont un accident. Nous avons aussi un rescue truck, as well as. Um, a, a ladder truck, a, a truck l'échelle, si la nuit um, a, a building qui est bien haut, qui a, qui a sous fait, nous a servi. Le um, truck ça là, a, a, qui est l'échelle, nous, nous a arrivé jusqu'à sous tête um, de ça. So, um, c'est équipement ça qui a venu tout de suite. Bon matin, nous avons ambulance là, 
avec l'autre équipement pour pour traiter les gens qui ne battent pas. Donc, so, nous apprécions ça tout bonnement. Et nous avons remercié la Corporation internationale en Japan pour la donation. Officier les pompiers qui est responsable pour le service de la en Allen Rosary. Complémenté pays Japon pour un cadeau. Ça là, et qu'à quoi qui Denry a trouvé un service qui était mérité pour un peu de temps après ça. Denry, c'est une place qui nous tout a espéré d'autres um, accidents qui bien sérieux. Et aussi, Denry, c'est aussi Denry, tout c'est une place côté nous a eu bon gogo et um, uh, saison cyclone. Et c'est un bon lait pour nous recevoir un cadeau, en ambulance neuf, qui ça aide nous à uh, travailler. Les gens qui couchent malade à l'hôpital Victoria, qui ont reçu un service qui s'est posé plus meilleur après ça, comme ils ont reçu un cadeau chef à Oul. Ça, c'est chez Aoul. Ce cadeau chez Aoul, c'est la sortie de Hot Company, le magasin MNC, qui a fait un remède. Les membres de l'hôpital de l'hôpital, ils ont reçu ce cadeau ça, là, euh, qui ont reçu un recevoir et que vous avez servi ces relâches là pour porter les gens qui sont malades, sortir dans une place ou entrer dans l'autre place à l'hôpital. L'officier qui est ça pour passer à l'hôpital, qui est aussi le directeur des affaires médicales, docteur Alicia Eugene, déclare que vous avez appelé que ce cadeau est là, et que vous avez et que vous avez aidé autant pour le système de santé de l'hôpital Victoria. Le ministre de la Santé, honorable Mary Isaac, remercie le magasin MNC pour vous affaire remède. Pour qualité assistance à la, et dit qu'il s'est assisté en pile de monde qui est malade, particulièrement les gens qui passent à marcher, et bien souvent, il y a une bonne assistance à la. Je vois pour le magasin de remède, Frédéric Joseph Léon, il m'a dit que l'organisation a été très pour présenter ces cadeaux à la. Il a ajouté que l'autre organisation a toujours fait appel pour trouver qualité assistance comme ça. Et là, il a examiné la situation, il a décidé que ça là. L'hôpital Victoria, véritablement, tenu pour ces cadeaux de chaises à Oula. L'hôpital Victoria recevait 19 chaises de Oula, hot magasin MNC, qui a fait remède. Décision qui le gouvernement prend pour prêter plus de 210 millions de dollars à la BAC, cette ci pour le développement de l'aéroport international de Hiwanora à Vieux-Fort. C'est un qui a porté un peu de significance à ses opinions, sénateurs, à sa façade de gouvernement, cette ci Timothy Mangal. Selon le sénateur Mangal, c'est un pays à qui le voisinage nous, quand la Grenade et ses versants, ni l'Europe qui sept fois plus avancé que ça nous a cette ici. Le sénateur Mangal, en contribution pour la session de Sénat en le Parlement, j'ai dit, m'a dit question, est-ce que nous confortable pour quitter l'Europe cette ici à degré qui est présentement Eh bien, pour une initiative pour placer à un plus haut degré, le sénateur Mangal, chicané qui plus en plus, tu risques à visiter cette ci Et ça, c'est la principale raison pour bâtir une facilité neuf, pour encourager plus étrangers pour visiter le pays. Si ce n'est pas ça, c'est le pays voisinage noir qui peut trouver tous ces bénéfices touristiques qui nous peuvent être recevoir à cette ci Et c'est comme ça, nous, votre nouvelle là, je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Et je vous remercie l'invitation pour que je puisse considérer qu'on se fait la vie. Je vous remercie pour ce nouvel accueil. Après ça, on a vu pour cette niche. Merci au Pale Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. A tropical wave will continue to produce cloudiness and scattered showers mainly over the southern portion of the Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. Another tropical wave, several hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles, is moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. Saharan dust in the vicinity of the wave is limiting convection and showers. Two other tropical waves located over the central and eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbor was high at 2.29 p.m. and will be low again at 7.02 p.m. The tide for VFOR Bay was high at 3.36 p.m. and will be low again at 8.29 p.m. The seas, moderate to locally rough, with waves 4 to 7 feet or 1.2 to 2.1 meters. 
Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and above normal seas. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.35 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.